currently in an age where social media rules supreme. From the personal to the professional, and even in ways that often blur the line between the two, our lives revolve around it in a way that seems inescapable. Here, clout is the only real currency that matters. Followers and engagement are the only metrics that decide your value. Image is everything. In response to this bleak truth, the fitness industry has infected itself with a horrible sickness in secret, one that I'll be shining a light on in these videos. Welcome to the Steroid Saga. To set the scene, we'll need an understanding of the root of the infection, steroids. We'll start with one that's a popular starter substance, especially for women, believe it or not, oxandrolone. Sold under the name oxandrin and anivar, among other names, it's an anabolic and androgenic steroid, or AAS for short. It was first discovered in 1962 as an attempt to create a suitable substitute for the male hormone testosterone but what was created was far stronger than they had originally intended. Anivar ended up being far more potent than testosterone, due in part to the fact that it doesn't get aromatized into an estrogen like aromatase. That combined with its high bioavailability and resistance to being broken down in the liver would solidify its status as a success as it was used over the next 30 or so years to treat catabolic disorders, disorders that caused or led to significant loss of muscle mass, like HIV AIDS, hepatitis, sarcopenia, severe burns, and bone pain associated with osteoporosis. When prescribed by a physician, the treatment is tailored based on the needs and response of the patient, but can range anywhere from 2.5 milligrams per day to 20 milligrams per day, divided in two to four doses per day during a therapeutic use period of about two to four weeks for most. This is due to the half-life of Enovar being about 8 hours, so the dosage is spread out to improve the length of time the individual is under the drug's heightened anabolic effects. While in your system, Enovar has been shown to decrease visceral fat and total body fat, increase protein synthesis and skeletal muscle, increase dietary energy and protein intake, increase nitrogen retention, increase muscle function, growth, strength, and physical activity level and substitute for the natural loss of androgen and estrogen hormones. And here is where you begin to see some of the reasons why this drug might be abused in the bodybuilding world. Anivar's powerful effect on things like muscle protein synthesis, visceral and total body fat, and nitrogen retention mean pretty big things when it comes to lifting. It means the hard work you put in at the gym will have a significantly higher return with protein synthesis that can be increased by as much as 44%. It means you'll feel stronger, get bigger faster, and be leaner than ever before. It means gains. Dosages for those who misuse the drug to build super physiological amounts of muscle mass can range from 2.5 milligrams to 20 milligrams daily for women and up to 50 milligrams daily for men over the course of about six weeks. Many users anecdotally report minimal, if any, side effects, especially at the lower doses, though it is regularly recommended, user to user, to perform some kind of pre, during, and or post-cycle therapy, PCT, to bolster the health of the kidneys and liver as they are put through a significant amount of stress during the process of a cycle. I plan on covering PCT in another video, so please like, subscribe, and comment down below to let me know if that's of interest to you. It's also often recommended to have regular, in most cases, monthly blood work done for both men and women to make sure you aren't responding badly to the drug, or in some cases, drugs, at any point in the cycle. But this isn't strictly regulated to Anivar, and we can cover that in more detail in a future video as well. Due to the fact that it's on the more mild end of AAS, which means lower damage to your organs, it does also mean the drug requires a great deal more in order to see benefits, especially when it comes to muscle building. 
This will vary from person to person, but often it is only suggested as a compound for females, as they are more responsive to it, and men in a caloric deficit to reduce body fat, known as cutting, as a way to mitigate the loss of lean mass. Many view the use of Anabar in any other capacity, especially for bulking or trying to put on large amounts of lean mass, to be a waste of time, energy, and health. So, it's an oral AAS that resists biotransformation, aka breakdown in the system, is absorbed in the GI tract in about one hour, has an anabolic to androgenic ratio of 10 to 1 compared to testosterone's 1 to 1, and leads to hella gains, especially for females and those who are cutting. By the way, its anabolic potency is somewhere between 322 and 633% higher than methyl testosterone. Yeah, you heard me right. I didn't stutter. So where's the downside? Well, one of them has actually already been hinted at. That resistance to being broken down in the system puts a very large amount of stress on the liver and kidneys especially. As much as 28% of anivar is excreted in urine, unchanged. That stress is simply the tip of the iceberg. Other possible side effects include, and hold on to your hats, this is going to be a while. Virilism, a condition in which women develop masculine characteristics. Priapism, a prolonged erection of the penis. Acne, cancer of the prostate gland, high amount of calcium in the blood, enlarged prostate, visible water retention, altered interest in having sexual intercourse, leg cramps, difficulty sleeping, chills, diarrhea, abdominal bloating, liver cancer, excessive fat in the blood, heart attack, heart failure, stroke, blood clots, liver tissue death, damage to the liver and inflammation, microscopic blood-filled cavities in the liver, inflammation of the epididymis of the testicles, low sperm count, high amount of bilirubin in the blood, inflammation of the liver with stoppage of bile flow, a yellowing of the eyes or skin from buildup of bilirubin called jaundice, high alanine transaminase levels, high aspirate transaminase levels, overexcitement, depression, aggressive behavior, feelings of hostility, decrease in the size of testicles, problems with menstrual periods, darkening of the skin, low energy, decreased appetite, or irritability. This doesn't even take into account the rampant problem of fake anivar on the market. As with any unregulated substance being sold on the black market, not all of those who sell it are honest about what's in the pills they're pushing. This leads to some people getting fake anivar masquerading as the real deal, a problem that is apparently far more widespread than you'd think. Dianabol and Winstrol seem to be the usual suspects when it comes to what fake anivar actually is, due in no small part to their similar effects and lower cost of production. As a safety and security measure, it's often suggested that you take the time to find a legitimate supplier and also test each batch as there's no telling what could be in one versus the next. Anivar is often the AAS of choice for many starting out because it's viewed as being safe, relatively speaking. And as such, the risks and possible side effects are often downplayed. The intention here isn't for me to tell you how to feel about Anivar or demonize it, but to give you a clear picture and a balanced understanding of the compound. How you feel about it, and if you do it, is up to you. I have no control over that. What is important to note here is that despite how it's viewed, there is still a risk with taking it. The best that you can really do is mitigate that risk with appropriate supplementation and consistent monitoring of your condition via blood work. The rest is up to your genetics, lifestyle choices, and chance. Make sure you drop a comment, like this video, and subscribe if you found this video informative. Eventually, I'll tackle other compounds, PCT, use in various parts of the industry by the general population, as well as social media influencers and how that affects people's sense of self, confidence, self-worth, and expectations around resistance training results. And of course, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.